Nathan East here to help celebrate the 30-year anniversary of the Yamaha Custom Shop in Los Angeles. Wow, congratulations, everybody. Let me take you back 40 years, 1980. Wow. (laughs) And I used to come up from San Diego and drive up to this club in North Hollywood called The Baked Potato. And that's where all the great musicians used to go play and hang out you know, after their sessions here in L.A. And one night I was there watching Lee Rittenauer play and he had Abraham Laboriel was playing bass. It was absolutely amazing. And Abraham was playing a Yamaha bass and he let me play it. And I said, where did you get this? So it turns out he got it in Japan and he recommended me to get in contact with Hagi from Yamaha, who's artist relations there. So the next year, Lee Rittenauer invited me to tour Japan with him. And we were playing at a club called the Pit Inn in Tokyo. And Hagi showed up with a beautiful wine-colored BB-1000 bass. And I just can remember playing it and falling in love with that instrument. And that began uh, what is now a 39-year relationship with Yamaha. When I got back to the States, I met some really cool folks at Yamaha America and used to go down to Buena Park and we'd have lunch. And those have been relationships that have lasted throughout the years as well. Uh, The one thing about the company is not only do they make great instruments, but Yamaha has some of the most personable and and great people working there. And it's really been fun to um, get to know all of them. And I have I have books of of uh, friendships of the people that only work at Yamaha. 
So throughout the 80s, uh, they would send me basses from Japan. Uh, Mr. Goto, who was actually making the instruments, would uh, be in touch with me. And we'd liaise via Yamaha America, talk about pickups and, um, you know, equalizers in the instrument and and anything that had to do with the basses. So uh, a beautiful collection of basses started arriving. And and as you can see in the wall behind me, uh, it's been a wonderful journey. Each each one of these instruments has a story uh, behind it. And, you know, whether it be on the road or in the studio, and it's been great. Now, if we fast forward to... 1990, Ken DePron opened the custom shop in North Hollywood. And that was fun because I used to go by and collaborate with them. Uh, it was just great to see all the woods and all the toys and, and instruments there. And, and so we started working on a signature bass and came up with the BB East. And so that was a, a fun project, um, working with, with uh, the good folks over there. And every day we'd kind of R and D talk about pickups and string length and width and how uh, what scale do we want the instrument? What electronics do we want? So uh, lots of R and D went into that, and then eventually collaborating still with Goto at the custom shop in Japan, we came up with the BBNE2, which is what I'm playing now. A wonderful instrument. Um, I never leave home without it now. And um, speaking of leaving home, any of us that knows when we travel with our instruments in a gig bag over our shoulders, that when we uh, go to get on board on commercial flight, we have about a 50-50 chance of being able to get on the plane with that instrument because sometimes they just say, no, you can't get on, it's too long, and you're going to have to check it, which is, you know, a nightmare because then you have to put the bass under the plane in a gig bag and hope for the best. Um, so, uh, in collaboration with the good folks uh, over at the custom shop in Calabasas and Takashi-san and Pat and Ken, and we came up with this beauty, and I got to give it to Pat Campolitano. You really, really sunk your teeth into this project and came up with what I think is a wonderful instrument. I've been playing it. And guess what? I've never been denied access to an aircraft with this, even though they've come out and measured it at the airport sometimes. Uh, Amazing instrument. And um, so this is what we're kind of working on to see if we can develop it further. Um, And um, so that's that's a fun project. And it's just been great. Uh, The company is fantastic. And I have to just say congratulations again and happy 30th anniversary Um, and to all the staff there, past and present, and you've been there for us for 30 years, and uh, let's keep doing it, just having a great time. But now, I'd like to turn it over to my good buddy Lee Rittenauer, who has some more stories, and then we're going to play a bit for you. So uh, here you go, ladies and gentlemen, Lee Rittenauer. Thank you, Nathan. Hey, congratulations, Yamaha, and... uh, we go back a long, long way. Not only uh, Nathan and I with Yamaha, but uh, my beginnings with Yamaha are even prior to Nate. Uh, I think back as far as 1974, I was in my 20s then, a long time ago. And uh, I remember playing in Japan, and uh, I wasn't really familiar with Yamaha. It wasn't a big company in the U.S. yet. And they had brought me a beautiful classical guitar, the Luthier at Yamaha had studied with the Ramirez in Spain, and they brought me a guitar that was, I think, built that same year in 74. And I think he only made two at the time. And it ended up on my recordings, gosh, for the next uh, 25 years. And finally, uh, I think after 25, 30 years, I I put it to to rest, and the next uh, versions of classical guitars uh, from Yamaha had finally come out by then. And uh, I started using uh, various ones. But uh, we want to say especially congratulations to the custom shop uh, in Los Angeles and uh, Yamaha in Southern California and Orange County and uh, to the big, the big guys in Japan. And uh, they've always had the players and the musicians and the enthusiasts for the guitar 
uh, in their forefront and their their hearts, and uh, they've always done an amazing job. And as professional guitar players, they've always listened. You know, they've always had their ears open and always wanted our feedback. And I remember the first time when I was a session player in Los Angeles, and we were already established, and that meant me and uh, guitarist producer Jay Graydon and uh, Dean Parks and back then uh, Larry Carlton and so they called a bunch of us to come to uh, Studio Instrument Rentals, a rehearsal studio in Los Angeles that's of course still there and and so we all came to the studio and we didn't know Yamaha, they didn't know us and they were all lined up and very serious with their notebooks and and we tried their guitars and, and we gave them our opinions one by one. And, uh, and then they went back and they actually enacted all our ideas into their latest line of guitars in the 70s. And we were so surprised because we had never seen a company do that uh, on such a level. And uh, of course, Yamaha went on to be this incredible worldwide successful company that they are today. But uh, they've always remained small in the sense that they're always hands-on with the, uh, of course, the artists, but uh, just the guitar enthusiasts in general from around the world. And the custom shop that's been here in 30 years, uh, based in Los Angeles, has just been fantastic. And uh, uh, shout out to so many people, but uh, definitely uh, uh, my longtime buddy that's been there for as long as I've known Yamaha, almost uh, Ken DePron. And... Uh, you know, between the guitar players, the acoustic players, the electric players, and the uh, drummers from that uh, use the Yamaha drums all over the world, and from the uh, uh, also the obviously the keyboards and band instruments. I mean, it's an incredible company. But the custom shop, especially for guitar, has been uh, you know my home and my friends, and have been uh, taking care of me for for years. And uh, even uh, Nathan and I go back to the 70s, uh, not quite the 70s, I guess it was early 80s when I met Nate, and he was playing with Hubert Laws, maybe he told you this story already, and I was so impressed, I think he was just barely out of his teens, maybe he was still a teenager, but he was, I noticed him right away, and uh, we would start playing together uh, soon after that, and uh, he would join me at the famed Baked Potato, and then started to travel with me, and uh, and then started to make his own mark. Uh, tremendous. Uh, he'd already started before, prior to me meeting him, but uh, he, he went on to play with everybody, of course, and uh, we, we've had a great friendship and uh, musical uh, combination that has endured uh, all these years. So uh, I decided to... Uh, on the NCX5 here, uh, which is on my new record that's just coming out this fall called Dreamcatcher. Uh, the, uh, my old tune, Morning Glory. This is, uh, I'm just, we're going to jam on an old song of mine, a very old song. It goes back to 77. I used to play this club in Los Angeles. It's still there uh, called the Roxy. And the Roxy was uh, always... Uh, on the Sunset Strip, it was always a famous club for pop and rock and R&B and not so much jazz. But then we started playing there along with a few other people in the uh, late 70s and early 80s. And and I think Nathan uh, joined us there as well. And and uh, I used to play this tune, Morning Glory, at that club. And it would get such a nice reaction. So it was one of the first times that I realized that uh, writing a song on the guitar, even if it was instrumental, uh, that it, if it had the, the the right impact. And that could be something more melodic, like uh, a Morning Glory, or it could be something crazy and fusion-ish that I was doing at the same time, like Captain Fingers. And, uh, you know, so whether you're talking about uh, the most progressive fusion jazz or metal or rock, you know, I, I did have that lesson that uh, melodies matter, you know, so... Uh, uh, and it's funny how writing on a Yamaha acoustic guitar has always been one of my passions for writing tunes. Whether they end up the final version on an acoustic guitar or not, it's like writing tunes kind of close to the heart with the acoustic uh, qualities is, is something I always recommend. So like this, this simple tune that goes back a hundred years, uh, Morning Glory. <laughs> Thank you. 
show. Uh, we got a little something that we're going to jam for you. Obviously, he's at my his studio and I'm in my room. And uh, we're going to do the magic of uh, modern 2020 and uh, make it work. So here we go.